Good morning. It's a beautiful day outside, isn't it? But it's even more beautiful in here because we've gathered together to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, thank you for that beautiful prelude this morning. Glorious is thy name, O Lord. We just want to worship him today. Let's stand together and greet each other as we begin this morning. Well, it is so good to be here this morning, and we just want to welcome you and thank you for being here. I know we have a lot of visitors, and we're especially glad that you're here with us this morning, and we trust and pray that you'll be blessed. I know you will, and uh, as we all will be, but we're glad that you're here. If you're possibly here for the very first time, I uh, hope you received a visitor's packet when you came in. If you would, there's a card in there. Just fill that out and drop it in the offering plate when it comes by so we can have a record of your visit today, and we are so glad to have you with us today. Uh, today, immediately following the worship service, a love offering will be received for the Bingham family. We mentioned this last Sunday, and I hope that you've been praying and asking God to show you how he would have you respond to that. And that uh, love offering will be re received at the end of the service today. Um, our Annie Armstrong Easter offering kickoff is today. Our goal is only $6,700, and our, our um, missions march will be on Easter Sunday morning. So you be praying and asking God how he would have you to uh, participate in this. And there is a prayer guide in here for uh, the missions offering. So take that and, and be much in prayer uh, about the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. As you know, those funds stay right here in the States uh, to help with things here at home. Uh, so be praying about that. Vacation Bible school dates have been set. Be mindful of that, June 24th through the 28th. Uh, youth drama practice tonight at 6, and again Wednesday night at 6.30. Uh, very important church council meeting has been moved to Wednesday at 7. And, of course, Kathy would want me to mention that the Easter lily order form is in the bulletin. So uh, get that filled out and get it back to Kathy as soon as possible so she can get those ordered. I have a thank you card this morning, and I want to share that with you. This is from uh, Leonard and Shirley, and it is a thank you to the church family for all that uh, was done for them during the time of uh, Shirley's sister Winnie's homegoing. And so this will be posted over on the bulletin board, and our love and prayers continue to be with Leonard and, and Shirley. Our God is an awesome God, isn't he? He is so good to us. We have a God who loves us, who cares about us, and who answers prayer. And as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, we just want to remember that and thank God that we have that ability to come before him, 
to make our request known to him, but not just to pray, but to know that God hears and answers our prayers. Let's stand together and join hands across the aisle as our pastor comes to lead us in our morning prayer time. Father God in heaven, we come in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, in your holy presence. And that's the only way that we can come. There is no merit of our own, Lord, that's deserving of you. There is no work. There is no effort. There is no anything else, Father, that is worthy of you except the righteousness of Jesus Christ within us. And we thank you for that. Uh, we didn't even deserve to receive your righteousness. But you loved us so much that you gave it to us through your death on the cross of Calvary. And you made us right in the sight of God the Father and the forgiveness of our sins. And the sacrifice for our sins that you made on the cross of Calvary was the atonement for all of our sins. Not some, not many, but all of them. And so we're grateful. We stand in your presence this morning as a forgiven people. Forgiven through the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. And how we bless you for that. And Lord, help us to know that you are calling us to a life of righteousness unto God. Lord, these are difficult times in which we live. But we have a great God that uh, rises above the difficult times we're living in. And we can place our trust and our faith in him day by day. And knowing that the promise of God's word is clear and sure in our behalf as God's children. And we bless you for that. We come to worship you today, Father, in spirit and in truth. And I pray for the removal of anything in this room today that would hinder us from doing that. I come against any attacks of Satan, any accusations of him to the children of God, to all of us, Father, in this time of worship. Because we're here for one purpose, and that's to worship God, nothing else. And Satan, you have no right in this place. Yes. And I command you in the name of Jesus to leave right yes. now. Exit this place because we're here to do business with our God and you are not welcome. You are not welcome. Only God deserves our attention today. And Father, we thank you and bless you. Come Holy Spirit and speak to our hearts afresh and anew. In Jesus' name we pray and all of God's family said, Amen. 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 Children, come on down for Children's Church at this time, and I believe Mr. Frank Cutchins will be leading our Children's Church. And as they're coming, just want to remind you that next Sunday morning we will be having a special youth service, not Sunday school, but a youth service. So pray for our youth as they prepare uh, for the youth service next Sunday morning. Good morning. Good morning. You guys had a good week this week. You know, a lot of people are uh, seeming to have to relocate in in our world today. They they have to move to different locations to keep jobs, maybe. And uh, I read a a short story not long ago and uh, I learned something really neat about that and I'd like to share it with you guys this morning and there was a little girl by the name of Laura and uh, she she had to move with her parents and that was years ago and it was interesting to me because I think you know people are moving today people moved years ago when the economy was good but this little girl when she went to the new school uh, some girls in the class came and they asked her how she liked the town. She said she didn't like the town. Said how she liked the school. She said she didn't like the school. They said, uh, well, how do you like the playground equipment? She says, I don't like the playground equipment because there's no jungle gym. And uh, so she just felt uneasy, Laura did, because she didn't have many friends. And about a week later, another little girl came to school. She had also moved, and she came from the same school that uh, Laura came from. Her name was Alice. And the girls in her class asked her, uh, I said, Alice, how do you like this town? She says, oh, it's a nice town. She says, I like to move. And she says, well, how do you like this school? I said, uh, 
Laura don't like it. Uh, and they sort of looked at her when they were talking to Alice. And Alice says, well, I like this school because it's got ivy on the side of it. And it grows plumb to the top of the roof. And says, it's a nice school. And uh, our teacher lets us water. Water the, uh, the ivy is what the girls were telling Alice. And uh, Alice says, well, says, Miss Griffin is a good teacher. And uh, so... Laura, she said that Miss Griffin wasn't as good a teacher as Miss Miller, the teacher at her old school. And so the girls left. They were going to lunch, and so they went to see how the lunch line was doing. And Alice walked over to Laura, and she says, Laura, says, I've been wanting to talk to you. Said, it's good to see you. Said, uh, we've got so many friends here. And uh, Alice said, uh, I, I like it here. Laura says, so you like it better than our old school? And she says, not really. said, I had fun there too. She says, I can like both schools. And uh, Laura says, well, uh, I don't know. said, I, I hate it here. And she says, Alice says, well, look for the good things. Look for the good things that, that in life and at this school, and you'll begin to really like it. About that time, the girls came back in from the lunch line to get Alice and Laura if she'd go. And one of them heard Alice say, you really like it. So they asked, Alice said, what do you really like about our school? And Alice and Laura says, uh, she, she didn't want to say anything good, but she says, you know, said, I'm going to take Alice's advice. I'm going to say something good. She says, I like the pictures that are on the wall that... Miss Griffin's putting up, and everybody draws so good. And uh, and one of the girls beamed, and she looked at her picture, and she says, uh, well, how about you and Alice coming over after school, and we will draw some more. So Alice looked at Laura and winked, and Laura thinks, well, you know, I'm not pretending. says, I'm liking this because we're having fun, and somebody invited me to come over. And so that story taught me that even though we're in, in bad situations or places we don't like, if we look for the good things uh, and talk about those good things, and we can't just talk about some good things. We have to talk about all good things and everything, that the Lord will start blessing us. And he says in his word for us to to flee from uh, talking about bad things and to follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. So he knows what makes us happy. If we'll just do that and not think about the bad things, we'll be very happy until he comes again. Our Father, we pray that you would bless us today with your presence. You would walk in this place, and Lord, you'd purge us of anything that would keep us from worshiping you and seeing you and speaking and teaching eternal life. Thank you for meeting our most desperate need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.